اهلا بيكم My talk today will be about the large bowel obstruction Large bowel obstruction is accounting for only 20% of bowel obstructions while small bowel obstruction represent about 80% of cases The clinical presentation is typically with uh, abdominal pain, uh, distension, and failure of passage of lattes and stool. The etiology of large bowel obstruction, the most common cause is colonic cancer, represent about uh, 50 to 60% of cases. The second most common cause is acute diverticulitis, which represent about 30% of cases. I mean together obstructing the tumors and uh, diverticulitis, acute diverticulitis account for about 90% of all causes of large bowel obstruction. The other causes include the vulvaris, either uh, cecal vulvaris or sigmoid vulvaris, uh, fecal impaction or hernia, and inshallah in next capsule I will discuss in details how to differentiate between cecal vulvaris and sigmoid vulvaris. Coming to radiographic features. Plain radiograph showing uh, dilatation of the colon, as you see here, which is characterized by the colonic hostations, which are in complete folds, not caressing the lumen, as we mentioned in the previous capsule. Also, we have collapsed distal colon, and we can have a small bowel dilatation in cases of incompetence of the ileocecal valve. CT is the modality of choice for assessment of large bowel obstructions and is not only able to confirm the diagnosis and localize the location of obstruction, but in most instances, it's able to identify the cause as well as the associated complications like ischemic colitis. In CT, the dilated colon should be traced distally until a transition zone is found. The cause is often present at this point. Regarding the CT protocol, in cases of bowel obstruction, it's done with intravenous contrast. Only one phase which is portovenous phase, with no need to give oral contrast, because the bowel is already obstructed and the retained fluid and the gas which resulted from obstruction will act as a normal contrast. Now let us uh, take some examples of large bowel obstruction. This is case number one. Old patient with the clinical diagnosis of large bowel obstruction, the erect plane radiograph reveals dilated small and large bowel loops with the multiple air fluid levels. The supine radiograph shows that the region of obstruction is located in the distal part of the descending colon, as you see here. CT was done with intravenous contrast to show it. In the expected location of the obstruction, there is a short segment, narrowing, measuring about 3 cm in distal descending colon, as you see, with dilatation of the proximal colon, and this lesion proved later by biopsy that it is adenocarcinoma. Case number 2. Another old patient with the clinical diagnosis of large bowel obstruction the supine plane radiograph reveals a marked large bowel dilatation with its characteristic appearance of uh, incomplete folds, not crossing the lumen, as you see. The CT was done with intravenous contrast, showing marked dilatation of the colon with internal fecal matter, as you see here. So when we trace this dilatation, we reach to the region of the rectus sigmoid as you see here and which we have here uh, circumferential wall thickening of the rectus sigmoid junction for a length about uh, about five centimeter with near complete obstruction of the lumen and the gross proximal large bowel dilatation confirmed later on by biopsy that it was adenocarcinoma case number three male patient 45 years old, complaining of left lower abdominal pain with clinical diagnosis of large bowel obstruction. The erect abdominal radiograph reveals the dilatation of the colon with air flow level with loaded dried colon with fecal matter as you see. CT was done with intravenous contrast. 
Uh, CT scan for the abdomen is done with intravenous uh, contrast administration. As you see, we have here marked the dilatation of the colon and there is a, a fecal matter seen inside the ascending colon. So we have to trace this dilated colon until reaching to the region of the transition zone, which is located here in the region of the rectosigmoid area. Here we have long segment of marked wall thickening associated with marked perisigmoidal fatty stranding as well as multiple lymph nodes as you see here these are lymph nodes at the same time in the region of the sigmoid we have multiple diverticular changes as you see these are multiple diverticula again so this is another diverticulum here so regarding such features of long segment wall thickening of the sigmoid perisigmoidal fat stranding and the multiple lymph nodes we raise the possibility of diverticulitis however the possibility of a colon cancer couldn't be excluded so this is everything related to the large bowel obstruction including uh, clinical presentation etiology diagnosis and the radiographic features see you inshallah in next episode with uh, how to differentiate between sickle volvulus and sigmoid purpose. Thank you very much.